from different places We all have different names No matter what life brings us Jesus is the same We're just your Methodist To the madness Methodist To the madness Hi, I'm Beth I'm Tim I'm Jessica And we're just your everyday Methodist, Methodist To the madness Hey guys, how's it going? Hey Beth, it's hey. good. How you guys doing? It's been a week. Yep. It's been a week. You are correct. Yes, indeed. It's been anything a- anything new for you, Beth, this past week? Oh, for sure. Um, Wednesday night, I got in a car accident and totaled my car. Um, oh my god! Wow. Every other Wednesday. Like every Wednesday, I've gone through so many cars over the last few weeks. It's getting ridiculous. Um, so I have a a rental car until insurance figures out, you know, how much I'm getting for my vehicle or whatever. Wow. And it's like a really teeny Mitsubishi. I can't say that word. Every time I try to say it, I'm like, I don't think I said it right. But I know <laughs> Mitsubishi. <laughs> I know how it's pronounced in my head, but then when I say it, I'm like, is that correct? Anyway, Mitsubishi Mirage, and it's just this dumb, tiny car that smells like cigarette smoke, and there's no dome light in it, so if I drop Craig's debit card, because I'm pretty sure my new debit card is in the car that I totaled, oh. I get my flashlight and just rummage around and then it turns out the post office isn't even open anymore anyway um i wasn't planning on saying all that but (laughs) i did get gas in that dumb little tiny car today because it was on empty and it took 37 dollars to fill the entire tank so it's a dumb stupid little car but when i have to fill up my other car it's pretty much double that maybe more it's right. more than double that so <laughs> bigger tank yeah yeah it's so. got it's but it still lasts the same amount you know really like, like it'll still last me a week i don't really <laughs> well actually it probably would have lasted longer but that leads me into the next thing that i was going to talk about i went to pasadena last night to go see brett goldstein who plays roy kent in oh, Ed Lasso, he yeah. actually got his start before he became the famous Roy Kent, who's here and there and every something where um, <laughs> he was a stand up comedian. And he's funny. I laughed a lot. I went with my friend Angie Doyle, who goes to, well, I wouldn't say she goes to the church anymore because she works on Sundays, but she's still affiliated with the church. And uh, we had a good time, and that's that was my week. Two things. Yeah. Yeah, I told hey, Brett Goldstein. Hey, Beth, uh, are you okay yeah. after that accident? That that uh, sounds like a really big, chaotic thing that happened. I'm for, those okay. that can't, for those of you that can't see Beth, she's got a full body cast on right now. <laughs> I got my legs and those, like, things and hold them up and... <laughs> <laughs> and my arms are just like hanging like they're just like up in the air too no i'm just kidding i didn't i didn't get hurt it's more i feel more like i feel like it's just it's it's really affected me more mentally than it has physically and so right. i just feel like this past week and even before my accident i just have just i've just been having feelings of the sad mm-hmm. but yeah. i don't know the accident didn't help but you know we got to have darkness to see the light so <laughs> <laughs> so i'm ready to talk about darkness when the time comes yeah yeah I'm glad yeah, I, you're okay as well, Beth, because that's scary. And yeah, you're the second person I've talked to this week that's been in a car accident within the week. Oh, wow. well, that's that's interesting. You say that because um, 
I got, I was texting back and forth with Cynthia Hennessy, who used to be the children's ministry director. And she Hmm. was telling me that her neighbor just got in a car accident recently. And she was wondering if maybe that was the person that I hit. And I was like, was her name Jennifer? And because, you know, I have her ID and everything. And so I know her name and her address and all this stuff. And, and she was like, I don't know her name. And so I was like, oh, that's probably not her then. But well, no, the addresses were different. But anyway, um, so maybe that maybe, you know, that lady or maybe everyone's just getting ex- in accidents. And on the way home from Pasadena last night on the when I was coming home on the north freeway, like right after Palmdale Boulevard, there was a three car accident that looked way worse than the one that I was in. So, whoa, you know, it's the holidays. I feel like everybody is just like, in a hurry. yeah, stressed. They're not thinking. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Literally, I, I feel like there's so many people out driving that aren't normally. So I think that also increases their. Yeah, stress. that's true. Yeah. And I think yeah. people just have a tendency to make mistakes in, in anything when they're stressed out from anything. So if you're behind the wheel, then. Yeah. And also I've noticed some like people that are just kind of like uh, erratically driving and I'm like, wait, what's wrong with that person? I I will have to be careful. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Even even the pedestrians. I was picking up Owen from school today, just a generic high school that he goes to. And there was a high schooler that had a red light and the red stop hand and then the cars had the cars going across had the green light and that person was just walking across the street while the cars were going and the what? car honked at that person because why is that person crossing the street oh my gosh that's and then, that's even, oh go ahead and then that high schooler put up one of their fingers i don't know what that means it probably means nothing it was a thumbs up i'm just kidding it was a different finger but oh. What, was it the oh. index finger or a <laughs> it was the index finger? No, it wasn't. It was the bad finger. And I was like, high schooler, you're the oh. one in the wrong. You don't get to show people your bad <laughs> finger. Yeah, seriously. Hey, that's even more hardcore than somebody um crossing the street when it's completely red on one side like oh wait no that's the same thing i i think right it's the same thing that's what that person was doing (laughs) and they had the audacity to show the bad finger to the car that was just trying to go through the green light (laughs) well isn't it a new law where pedestrians have the right of way (laughs) that's always been the law but the new law is that jaywalking is now that's okay yeah so technically you should have given them the same finger and high-fived with each other and said, you're not breaking the law, you know? That's all the fingers. (laughs) (laughs) One time. Yeah, I was kind of thinking, oh, there's a lot of traffic. They all must be going to the new Raising Canes over by the Antelope Valley Mall. (laughs) Have you guys ever, you've never been? No, mm-hmm. I haven't. Amber is so excited. We have no oh. idea when to go because so Raising Canes was actually the very first one is from Monroe, Louisiana, which is oh. where Amber is from. And so oh, cool. these are literally following her to California <laughs> and she is so excited. That's so, awesome. I know. We just we haven't gone yet. And uh because- so long to wait because, that's right because <laughs> everybody is driving so fast and furious throughout <laughs> Paul, 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 Paul. i think they're driving they go to raising canes i think they're driving too fast too furious <laughs> <laughs> too furious <laughs> hey, anyway hey. how are you tim and or Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jessica, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I, 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 okay, I, okay, I'm just going to go first. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 
Okay. Um, first, I wanted to chime in with what Beth was saying because it does relate to my story. Um, but the first thing is, yeah, Beth, I'm glad you're okay. Um, and I hope that you could recover um, like mentally and emotionally from what happened, but glad you're physically okay. That's uh, really important. Um, so uh, I actually, at the start of last week, um, had uh, the sad, as Beth was saying. Um, <laughs> That's what we're calling it now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was it was um, Tuesday. Uh, so the, uh, on Monday, I um, was able to feel better. I think through like what um, would be a more like spiritual approach, like reaching out to God and praying and stuff like that. And I think I did that on Tuesday, but I felt like there was still something off, like I, I needed to figure something out. And um, so uh, in the spirit of the holidays, I uh, managed to incorporate um, what I might have referenced uh, the previous week. I can't remember if I did um, the idea of focusing on your favorite things. And that one song, My Favorite Things. Julie Andrews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that that's such a nice song. And for anybody who uh, wants to think about their favorite things or um, you may be feeling a little bit uh, upset or sad during the holidays, then uh, I highly recommend it. Um, in any case, I, think I... Oh, go ahead. We should make a list of our own favorite things and yeah. sing it to the tune of that song. Oh, that would be so cool. Maybe that can <laughs> be a holiday special episode. <gasps> yeah. Yes. Let's do it. Anyway, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, So I started looking forward to some of my favorite things that day um, once I realized this. And that made me feel a lot better because I was just thinking about like some video games that I would want to play or like something I would want to do after work and really looking forward to that. And uh, that that just really lifted my spirits. And and I was really surprised. Um, And so this ended up being such an important idea that I realized that maybe I could just start looking forward to things in general. Like when I'm at work, maybe I can um, look forward to uh, the accomplishment of something, Um, like how I'm going to feel after I accomplish a particular task or Mm -hmm. um, reach out to a person that I need to like talk to about some like uh, important matter or something like um, so that was a really big uh, realization for me. Um, and then later on, uh, I was thinking about it. I actually mentioned this to uh, like a coworker friend, um, like looking forward to things. Um, and basically that kind of jogged the idea of Maybe it's not always possible to look forward to doing things at work, like even if it's something that's going to like help you uh, so much like that day or that week or something like that. Um, And so I started kind of like thinking about um, how I feel in general, like first thing in the morning and things like that, like just like my attitude towards work. And I came to the realization that um, I think that what I can do is. Um, notice my initial impression or my first impression of what the day is going to look like or or like what a task is going to be like. And instead of just accepting that first impression and just making that my lasting impression for the day, um, maybe what I could do is kind of just ask myself questions about it and try to make myself feel a little more optimistic about uh, mm-hmm. whatever that task is. Um, and uh once I came to that insight, I, I realized that that really helps a lot. Like I had a much like more optimistic day today because I was like trying to like come up with a, a reinterpretation of like uh, my first impression. So it's so like active optimism. Cool. What? Active optimism. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a good yeah. way to put it. I'm, I'm not going to like say that I came up with that, Beth. I'm going to say that you came up with that. <laughs> Somebody else probably did. And I just, it, it, it entered my brain and I <laughs> thought I came up with it, but really I subconsciously stole it. That's probably what happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, besides all those like different insights, so it's been, it's been an interesting like ideas week, which is really nice. Um, I, uh, 
well, there was a fourth thing, but I don't remember what it was. So I'm going to say what the fifth thing was. The fifth thing was I, <laughs> my water pitcher in the kitchen. Uh, apparently, I hadn't changed the filter in a really long time. And this morning, the water started tasting like a little bit strange. And so I was thinking like, oh, my gosh. Okay, so do I have another water filter to put in in the thing? Mm -hmm. So I happened to find one. It was underneath the cupboard. I was like totally confused as to where it was, but I actually put it in a convenient location. Um, wow! So I, I ch yeah. <laughs> so I changed the water filter, and of course the water tasted so much better. But uh, I also felt better too. So I think I'm going to make a new rule for myself to change my water filter in my pitcher like once a month or something. Cause I think the recommendation is like two, two, what is it? Uh, every two or three months. But if it's every two or three months, I'm probably going to forget to change it. Mm -hmm. So I might as well just change it once a month. Um, yeah. Doesn't a light come on help. when the filter needs to be changed? I don't know. There's some issue with my water pitcher. Like, I don't know, like, it's the light it's, underneath or something. I don't know. Is like, it like a Brita pitcher? It's a Brita pitcher, yeah. Oh, it's not a refrigerator one. Well, you could put it in the refrigerator. Well, I know that, <laughs> but my refrigerator dispenses water and it flashes when I need to change the filter. I only have to change mine every six months, which turns into once a year because I forget to do it. Right, right. Yeah. It's like wearing contacts. Why change it every month when you can get a year <laughs> supply <laughs> for two years? Exactly. <laughs> All of the optometrists yeah. are just like really just cringing. They're cringing right, right now. now. <laughs> yeah. Their marketing scheme of making you get new contacts every month is failing at this moment when people realize <laughs> no i can get a year supply and have this last for two years anyways yeah <laughs> oh so, i remembered the fourth thing um <laughs> oh good i was waiting <laughs> So, okay. so I so I figured out how to actually implement what I was saying about uh, changing your uh, initial impression. And um, mine. Well, no, not yours. <laughs> Our minds are made up, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tim. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so um, it's really been super helpful to me. And this is something I was doing before VBS. And then I ended up forgetting about it. Uh, <laughs> it's been helping me so much to uh, incorporate meditation, like breathing meditation uh, into my like daily um, routine. Like, I, well, it's not really a routine. I'm kind of just doing it sporadically when I feel like <laughs> I need to. <it>, but... <laughs> That's how I'm living my life. <laughs> But uh, I, I'm keeping it as simple as possible, so I stick to it. And the sim simple approach is only meditate for 10 minutes. You get, I get my smartphone, set a timer for 10 minutes. I don't do more than 10 minutes because if I do that, I'll get overwhelmed next time and then I won't do it anymore. So uh, 10, 10 minutes once or twice a day. And that is really helping me focus and it's really helping me like relax and um, with that, like, relaxed, more focused mindset, I think I actually can sort of change my first impression, like, interpretation and, like, uh, have a different perspective on, um, like, my day or something that I need to accomplish. So, so yeah, I, I don't think every week is going to be like this at all. Like, suddenly, oh, I have uh, the epiphanies of, uh, like, lots of wonderfulness or whatever i, I don't think that's gonna <laughs> <laughs> the epiphanies of wonderfulness uh, jessica what's going on with you what's up with you uh, <laughs> not much you know uh yeah so i i left work a little bit later today which means i was like a little bit late for our normal scheduled uh broadcast this evening but appreciate your flexibility with that uh yeah work's 
going to be crazy for a little bit because we were preparing for an accreditation site visit at the end of January. But it's fun because I love putting together organizational spreadsheets through Excel and um, Google Sheets and creating job drop downs. Uh, anyways, uh, but other drop. than that, uh, I don't know. I've been I've been starting to write music again, which is uh, it's very new because I need to be in like a specific mental space and like having a sense of clarity. Uh And so it's been kind of fun. I've been trying to challenge myself to um, write a song around uh, whatever the pastor's sermon is. And so I have been focusing on writing a song about like the darkness and um, but how God is with us. And so it's been a lot of fun. I've been a songwriter for like over 20 years. And so um, it's nice to be able to start doing that again. Cause I have been jaded by the industry in the past. And so it's, oh. uh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, that's but yeah, really cool. That's though, exciting. Jessica. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about it. One thing I'm super excited about though, is things that are happening in the church And some of those things are coming up this next week. And I wanted to share one thing, which I know everybody's excited about. Um, There's the Scouts Chili Cook-Off in the Social Hall tomorrow at 7 p.m. And that's so that's tomorrow is Tuesday, because if you're listening to this, it's December 11th. And if you're listening to this in the future... Welcome to December 11th again. <laughs> uh, That's a place, actually. Welcome to yes. December 11th. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, on, on December 12th, uh, 7 p.m. in the social hall is the Scouts Chili Cook-Off. And it is really an awesome thing that Pastor John's been talking about because he gets to taste test all of that. Can anyone go to that? Do you have to be a scout? Anybody can go. You can even show up and say, I'm a scout. And they'll go, sure. And do we need, do we need mustaches? That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Do we need the mustache or? I don't know. I feel like you need like a patch or something to enter. (laughs) A soul patch. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, uh, and then also earlier in that uh, tomorrow uh, or December 12th at 1 p.m. is is Claire Egan's memorial service. So for those that are, are planning on attending, um, December 14th is the senior Christmas luncheon at 1130 in the morning in the social hall. And then on December 16th is Neil's memorial service at 11 a.m. And then uh, December 17th. This is the big day, everyone. Uh, lots of ladyship. That's coming up. Women's Christmas party from 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. And this is at Pastor Jim and Jody White's home. So if you are identifying as a lady and you want to go to this, we want to see you. It is going to be a gift exchange and it's also going to be food. So I encourage you to bring something. I think they are encouraging you to bring something uh, and it's going to be awesome. So for 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m., Lots of hours for laughs and excitement. And then December 24th, we're going to have like 7,000, 7, uh, about 7,000 uh, worship services. One of them is at 9 a.m. <laughs> so at 6 p.m. and 7.30 p.m., there's two different traditional services that you can attend. Now, if you have... Uh, a small child or maybe you personally are, are a child are are a small child yes <laughs> um, there is a family interactive worship service at 6 p.m in the social hall uh, that way you can kind of move around a little bit you don't have to sit in a pew you can just there's hot chocolate. yeah there's hot chocolate it's going to be really interactive so Make cookies Okay, so I think I'm leaning more towards the family interactive worship at this point. Yeah. Cookies and hot cocoa and Ooh. and hugs. Just and kidding. Hugs. There will be no hugs. There will not be hugs. Santa <laughs> <laughs> uh, will be there as well. I don't think he will, will he? In spirit, yes, he's going to be. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> was I supposed to arrange that? <laughs> <laughs> No, in spirit. We have conversations. It's fine. Everything's arrange.d um, So yeah, lots happening. We're super excited about it. Um, and you know, there's so many things that uh, there are out there to be grateful for, and also to be um, celebrating this holiday season. So I encourage those that are listening to this. If you don't normally attend the service in person, and you're you're an online person, but if you're in the area, we would love to see you at one of these uh, Christmas Eve services at any of them, the nine a.m., six or seven thirty, whichever one. We'd love to see you and and to celebrate uh, Christmas with one another. So, well, I guess it'd be Christmas Eve, but you know. If you want to stay till midnight, we can always <laughs> try to make that happen. But yeah, if, if any of you come in person, uh, you'll get a warm welcome from the church. And then if you go to the six o'clock uh, event where you're moving around, uh, you'll get hot chocolate and you'll be even warmer. It'll be an yeah. even warmer welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. This kind of leads us into Beth's ministry moment, which Beth, I know this is a really special moment for us in particular, and I'm excited to hear what you have to say. So Beth, do you want to share what our, our moment is? Yes. Take I would it love away. To. All right. Well, as you know, we now have an email address and we're encouraging people to email us and that email address is methodists to the madness at gmail.com. And I thought it would be fun to read to our listeners, the emails that we have received so far. So the first one I'm going to read is from the Google community team. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going <laughs> to skip that. <laughs> that actually technically was the first one. It was. <laughs> that was, I got three from the Google community team. Actually, there's so many. There's six from Google and then two from members of our church. So the first email that I will read is from Jim White. I think he's our pastor at our yeah, church. I, I, I think, think he's so. New. He's new. Yeah. He's new. Yeah. yeah. Um, new to the church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> new to the church. You know, <laughs> almost a decade there, but who's counting? Right. Um, <laughs> so the subject from Pastor Jim White is Songs for Lucy. And the body of the text says, My choice. We're not going to take it by Quiet Riot. Jim, yeah. so if if any of you are just coming in on this podcast and don't know the backstory, my friend Lucy has stage four breast cancer, metastatic to the lungs and the something else. I can't liver, I think. Anyway, every week for chemo, she is um, posting a new song that she's listening to to encourage her that she listens to on the way to chemo and and i suggested maybe people can contribute their own songs and we can make our own playlist for her so that's the first suggestion we got from pastor jim thanks so much pastor jim thank you so that. much thank again. you and our next email is from kathy ankeny the subject is thanks for another great podcast yeah. And he writes, another great job on the recent podcast. I enjoyed your guest, Amber. It was good to get to know her. Question for Bethist. She, <laughs> they call me Bethist sometimes. Um, <laughs> is playing the air guitar, like using air quotes in a restaurant? Just kidding. <laughs> Never seen anyone do that. I really enjoy your sermon thoughts. Your insights encourage me to go back and listen again from just different perspectives. Keep up the good work. Thanks for the podcast and email address, Kathy Ankeny. So I would like to pretend oh, that I have no idea what she is talking about. But um, one time, Kathy and I and a couple other friends were meeting, I think, at Denny's or something. And I was using... <laughs> excessive air quotes <laughs> <laughs> and it just kind of became a thing that we were all doing like by the end of the night <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so when she says, I've never seen anyone do that, she means me. <laughs> <laughs> and then um I got so <laughs> I got so excited to read Kathy's email that I accidentally deleted the message. <laughs> 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 and then when I was trying to find it, I blocked her email address while I was trying to undelete the email. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I, I figured out how to unblock her <laughs> and undelete her, but it just it just figures it would happen to Kathy, who often lets us know how much she enjoys the podcast and how do I repay her by deleting her message and blocking her. I was wondering why she reached out to me and was like, hey, I tried emailing, but it came back. You're now blocked. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Thanks, I'm just, I'm thanks just for sure. writing. <laughs> Well, here's the thing, um, okay, Beth, you, you did an undelete and an unblock. So for any of you in the audience, if you want to know how to undelete email and unblock users, then Beth knows how to do it. Because I well, don't I know think, how to do that, actually. I think somebody's raising their hand in the audience. I see. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> not. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait, that was a kid with a stoplight in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> so write us an email if you want to hear it read on the podcast. Yeah, we want to hear from you. Or write us an email to tell us you don't want us to read your email right. on the podcast. Yeah, if you don't want us to read it, please put a disclaimer on there. Yeah, yeah, you, for, um... The emails, the you, what we could have an acronym if you don't want us to read it, then just put like DNR, do not read. I don't know. Yeah. Or, or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think that acronym's already taken, Tim. <laughs> Wait, what does DNR stand for? for Are you else? serious? Tim. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> <laughs> oh no do not resuscitate Tim <laughs> I feel like I offended someone I don't think you offended anybody I think it's just funny it's just funny Tim. nobody's offended <laughs> oh boy okay wait GNR might not be the right one how about yeah. off the record <laughs> yeah off the record <laughs> OTR. OTR. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, actually that that works. Yeah. Yeah, OTR. Yes. Yes. So now that oh. uh anybody who looks up DNR and Google, I'm not saying for anybody to do that, <laughs> but now you'll know what it means because <laughs> they probably know. Um, <laughs> and anybody watch Grey's Anatomy out there, they know. <laughs> yeah, we're Maybe basically all doctors at this point. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that has been on for like twenty years, so that's a lot of medical knowledge we all know. I so, concur. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, there's the consensus. OTR, if you don't want to <laughs> read your emails. <laughs> on the it also DNR also means Department of Natural Resources, so that's all. Really? Awesome. It, yeah, I it did is. not know that. Oh, that's good to know. So that's Very called nice. ID IDNK. I did not e. know. Oh, <laughs> IDNK. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna finish this podcast with just saying the first letter of the words we're wanting to say. Yes. I, I, it just went back to like 20 years ago when cell phones and texting first came out. And, you know, do you yeah. remember that commercial uh, where the mom asks, who are you texting? And she says, IDK, my BFF, Jill. Yes. I say that to my kids all the time and they don't know what I'm talking about. Oh my God. And I will not elaborate. Yeah. We have yeah. no time for that. No Speaking time. Speaking of oh, no time. There's no time. No, yes, yeah, speaking of no time. <laughs> speaking of no time, there's no time like speaking about the, the, darkness, the dark present. Yes. And 
diving into this week's sermon feedback. We're really excited to go over and discuss what Pastor Jim talked about at church. And this was the second sermon uh, from his God's Holy Darkness. We dove into uh, specifics from Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 through 27, and the uh, overall conversation was about the dark of the Passover. And I'm curious what you guys thought about this past Sunday. I feel like there was a lot that um, that he unpacked. What do you guys think? First of all, I totally passed over what the meaning of Passover was until now. I didn't know what yeah. it was. Yeah, How actually, it came about and why it was, I don't want to say celebrated, but it is a celebration. It's a holiday. Yeah. I don't know. But I didn't, I guess I didn't know the context. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I was uh, shocked that uh, I didn't know and, as much as, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. and it it got me thinking about how there's a lot of darkness in the Bible. And I didn't, it, when we celebrate Christmas, it's, it's kind of a lot of the holidays that we celebrate, there's a darkness to them, you know, because Easter, we're, we're celebrating Jesus died, but three days later, he rose again. And we're celebrating Christmas, but King Herod still ordered like mm. all the males under two to be murdered. And I never really thought about that deeply until this year. I, I never really like thought, wow, that's, that's pretty terrible. You yeah. Know? It's just oh, like sure. something you read and like, yay, Christmas. Yay. Jesus was born. And like, Oh, but what about all those babies that died? Mm -hmm. You know, that's true. So, yeah, it's it's important um, to look at both both things like that. I I yeah. think that make that that really provides a lot of clarity. I think for uh, like at least in my experience, like a person of faith. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like Pastor Jim said that we we should it's it's the holidays are a, a bitter i don't remember his exact words but he said that the holidays can be a bittersweet time because it is it's supposed to be a time of joy and happiness but then you also think about the people who are no longer with us that you used to celebrate with and it's it's just i've never really fully thought about how so much of life is that it's 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 like the 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 light mixed with the darkness like there is the happiness but there's also a little bit of the sadness with it yeah. you know? and that's yeah. just that's just us walking around as humans i think but yeah. but especially <laughs> you know <laughs> but especially like the holidays it kind of like sinks in a little deeper um I don't know if you saw the Christmas movie Mixed Nuts. It has, I, th I think it's from like 1993. It has Steve Martin and Rita Wilson. And it's got a lot of big names in it. John Stewart and I'm Parker. I'm more of a cashew. In it and yeah, I was going to say, like, <laughs> does it have something to do with squirrels? or <laughs> Adam Sandler is in it. It's weird. It's a weird movie. And... Juliet Lewis is in it. It's kind of a quirky movie. I watched it when I was in high school because I was like really obsessed with Adam Sandler. And I watched it again recently. And it it's 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 always interesting to me to watch it like with the different lens of being an adult versus when I was a teenager. Right. And a lot of the movies when I watched them that I liked as a teenager, I'm like, oh. This movie did not hold up. I don't know why I liked this movie, but I still enjoyed <laughs> this one. I think there are a couple of things in there that didn't age well that might be a little problematic, but like in general, mm -hmm. I like the movie and um they they run a Steve Martin and Rita Wilson, they help operate like a suicide 
hotline to try to, you know, help people over the holidays and make, uh, make, make them not as sad, but wow. And, and a bunch of stuff happens. And I, I think it's Steve Martin who says that the reason the holidays are so tough is because everything is underneath a magnifying lens. Like the things that are hard just seem harder around the holidays. And yeah. I don't know that even when I was a teenager, I still always think about that, like how, how that's true. You know, yeah. it is, it's like a magnifying lens where like things that aren't, don't seem as bad, like when it's not the holiday season, just somehow seem so much worse. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it's like a combination of like, you know, any form of uh, annual moment, like, a birthday or yes those big holidays that tend to uh cause you to reflect and kind of sit in and i almost find that it puts this moment of reflection on you where you're like evaluating your life and you're yeah. like yeah. is this, is this where i want to be and then you start looking at social media and where people yeah. are at, where people your age are at and all these things and expectations you put on yourselves and like all these things. And I think for the holidays specifically, I think you dive deeper into maybe a family dynamic or mm-hmm. uh, yeah. like people that you're celebrating with. You kind of like go into this spiral at times where you're like, yeah you're away from family and then you start becoming like, Oh, my family doesn't want to see me or I don't know, just like certain things. You yeah. Just spiral. Right. Um, right. Absolutely. I have a question for you guys. Okay. Um, I haven't watched a single Christmas movie this year because I don't know. I just, I just am not ready. I can't get into them right now, but one that I, I watch every year is love actually and i think in that movie they say because at christmas time you tell the truth is that a thing at christmas time you tell people the Uh, truth is that festivist you do (laughs) 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 that's true but Am I supposed to be telling people the truth at Christmas time? I've been lying to everybody. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's news to me. Yeah, that's (laughs) yeah. Is Christmas the truth telling time? I mean, maybe that would maybe that would be like I can't think of any other holiday that. Uh, it would be more appropriate for you to like uh, be honest. St. Patrick's honest about Day, because or... because the alcohol brings the truth out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is on uh, Valentine's Day this year. What? Yeah, we're really excited about Mardi Gras. We we are a Mardi Gras celebrating kind of family here. Mm, that's very nice. That's mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Easter was on Jonah's birthday one year, and Jonah's birthday happens to be April Fool's Day. So that was weird. Do you remember that? <laughs> I think that was during the pandemic, and we were like, "What is happening?" Well, April <laughs> Fools. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. Anyway. Oh um, yeah, there's a lot that was covered. There was a, a quote that he shared from an anonymous 14th century writer that said this darkness and cloud is always between you and God, no matter what you do. And it prevents you from seeing him clearly by the light of understanding in your reason and from experiencing him in sweetness of love in your affection. So you set yourself to rest in this darkness as long as you can always crying out after him whom you love. For if you are to experience him or to see him at all, Insofar as it is possible here, which is an that literally that sentence is not necessary, but it must also <laughs> be in this cloud and in this darkness. So it's like we are given another layer. I felt this year, this this year, this week of we have the darkness and the light, but now we have this cloud and this almost like grayness that we experience where yeah. it's kind of like 
sit in that and know that when you get to that point where, you know, you feel like you're in that grayness, it means that you're, you're even closer to what God is wanting to teach you and what he, what he's wanting to share with you, you know? Yeah. 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 I I think that's really fascinating. It kind of speak. It's interesting because after you had read it, I hadn't had this insight when I, I, when I was listening to the sermon um, on Sunday. Uh, But basically he like, that really speaks to me. The, like, basically he mentioned something like light of reason or that which comes from the light. Uh, and then maybe understanding spirituality and faith and everything associated with like that connection to God um, being the darkness. And uh, when you shine the light on it, it, it you you can't really uh, reveal all that which is in the darkness. And that really has been my spiritual life. I, I feel yeah. like uh, my reason just can't like get there all the way into the, the faith and spiritual territory, but, but it could, it could provide a path for the darkness perhaps, mm-hmm. but it's like, really being there in in those moments with god um like within his, his holy darkness basically um mm-hmm. has just really empowered my faith like really just like trusting god and then still trusting our reason but but knowing that our faith is uh really strong and um we can we can push forward with that we can we can be there with god in in his holy darkness um with yeah. with our um like basically, I guess you could say illuminated faith, uh, more or yeah. less. Like we use our reason. It's like that's the light, but then we, the faith. Yeah. So it's just, that's really cool. I think that's awesome. Yeah. It's like the, the, um, the verse from Exodus 19, uh, the verses 16 through 18, God descended upon the mountain in the form of a thick cloud with thunder and lightning. And the mountain was yeah. wrapped in smoke. Can you imagine, like, I think this is what I think of in that in real, in like modern day, right? You're driving, there's loud music, there's people honking horns. There's like so much going on. Like maybe there was like a traffic light that's out and it's just complete chaos, but you're having a very clear conversation with God in the midst of that. That's like literally the one thing I could think of, or maybe like, that's yeah. awesome. Say it's super busy at the checkout lines at the grocery store, and mm-hmm. you're sitting in the very center. Just so much is happening. Holiday music is going on. People are like running around. Kids are screaming, and all of a sudden, like God is just wanting to have a conversation with you. And, mm-hmm. teach you. and maybe yeah. that's horrible examples. No, I I, I can really well, like relate to that, Jessica. I'm really glad you mentioned I, that. I think, um. I really love rainbows Mm -hmm. and like if anybody asked me what my favorite color is, I would probably say purple, but really I think my favorite color is rainbow. I don't think that (laughs) say that your favorite color is rainbow and one rainbow represents, you know, God always keeps his promises and two, a rainbow represents LGBTQ or even being an ally, which is what I like to think All that right. I am. But also, what I love so much about rainbows is that rainbows can't exist unless there's light and darkness at the same time. Oh, wow. That's, um, I'm so glad you mentioned that. So when it rains... It, I love it when it just rains, but I also love it when the rain is letting up and it's kind of light over here. And then you just see a big rainbow across the whole sky. That's my favorite. Like, you know, yeah, that, I that, love it so much. I can relate to that so much because um, I think the moments of insight that I might have on a given week or a given day really come from light and darkness. Like Mm -hmm. I I really can't have just the light because then I'm just, you know, with that. But when I have the darkness, that it's like the insight that I get from the darkness, which tends to be a bit more profound than than the insight that I get from the light. When I put them together, it's just like beautiful and it ends up working out so well. So that that's Mm -hmm. such a great thing that you brought up. I'm glad you mentioned that. We need both, but I think, I also think like the darkness 
within us, like what we've gone through, like shapes us into who we are. And, um, yeah, it, it helps. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I, I guess I know I what think, you mean. I think, I yeah. think I know what you mean. Like I'm thinking about like, um, attributes of myself, like being able to like practice empathy for another person that comes in darkness. Yeah. Um, for example, and I think there's, and, yeah, go, go ahead. And when I have a sad, I know that it's not going to be forever, you know, yeah. like eventually the light will meet with the darkness and make the rainbow. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. divine unnatural darkness. And, um, that when we encounter times of darkness in our lives, instead of dreading it, we should embrace it because yes. we yes. God in new and powerful ways. I remember that's what he mentioned as well in the sermon. And it was like, that's really, I great. love the, and, the process or the thought of thinking that divine darkness, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's a really cool thing to think about. And that yeah. when you get to that gray space, it's like this, um, it's like the opaque splendor of God. Is yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's that's wonderful. And um, yeah, actually, speaking from like personal experience, um, I think there was a point in my life where uh, I was kind of letting the darkness like overwhelm me. And I think that's like car wash, Tim. It's dark (laughs) in there. (laughs) But (laughs) I mean, (laughs) At, at some point, I actually um, figured out, I, I think with like uh, to speak of, I think a turning point for me was um, when uh, I had a few conversations with the young adult life group. Actually, I think like that week afterwards, um, I started feeling like I wasn't so overwhelmed by the darkness and um, I started having courage. So with Pastor Jim mentioning about embracing the darkness, um, I think that was something that I did not really knowing that I was doing it, but uh, feeling mm-hmm. like that's what I needed to do. And so and now it's like I just feel much more like a whole person now that I'm not mm-hmm. letting that aspect of myself like overwhelm me. So and now yeah. now it's kind of like we it's opportunities to learn, I think, um, when you have. Um, when you have darkness and uh, and even just like opportunities for greater faith. So, yeah, there's just much to be said. And then uh, mm-hmm. also you can't have light without the darkness, I think. Mm-hmm. You have yeah. to shine Jesus' light. Shine, shine, yeah. Jesus, <laughs> shine light. Jesus' light. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's why I like comedy so much, though, because yeah. it, it helps me through the dark times. And even when I'm going through something really terrible, there's all, I'm always in the back of my mind. I'm like, at least this is going to be really funny later. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think it's, I think it's also just like what you both are talking about is we're sharing, you know, I think having a sense of community and being able to relate with one another and knowing that we're not going th- through certain things alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're putting ourselves in environments that we're being vulnerable and we're opening up and we're, um, you know, trying to better understand and also learning from each other. And I think mm-hmm. that helps. it helps so much. Yeah. yeah, it does for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, because so, my brain plays oh. tricks up sometimes and it's like nobody cares. Nobody else is going through any of this, but right. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, not true, Beth. That is not no. true. Right, right. No. It takes a long time to learn that that is not true, though. Like, I can totally mm-hmm. relate to what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, one one other thing that I wanted to mention, and uh, it relates to the darkness, but um, it's associated with the Passover. Um, I thought it was so interesting, the parallels between the... Uh, uh, Jesus being resurrected and that Passover. So you have like the lamb protecting uh, the the um, Israelites. And that's what Jesus is doing uh, for us. 
Um, and he um, is ascribed to be the Lamb of God. So you have the Lamb that the Is- Israelites put on the doors, and then you have uh, Jesus as the Lamb of God. And then you have that three three day um, past event um, um, where uh, Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments, mm-hmm. and then with Jesus, he was resurrected uh, in three days uh, after. Um, being crucified. So I thought that was so interesting. I didn't realize that there was a parallel like that. Yeah. Um, so it just kind of like makes me feel even more connected to like the connection between the New Testament and the Old Testament. I think there's other examples lo- just like that too, like where there's there's inspiration drawn or not really inspiration, but but just the, the uh, being able to compare and, and notice the similarities between stories in the Old Testament and stories in the New Testament. It's just awesome. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And I um, forgot to mention the updates. I finished the small group, the uh, Bible study series this past week. I know it was supposed to be, I think, like a six week series, but we did like, I don't know, it took us like three months to finish. our. (laughs) It happens. um, But we were going back and forth between different books of the Bible and, and relating to similar stories throughout the Bible and one takeaway that I got from that was we don't, there's so many different references to the story of David and Goliath that we don't know if it was actually David that killed Goliath or even if it was Goliath that was killed. Wow. Which blew my mind because it's like, <laughs> that's a child. Like you tell like a children's story. Oh, you know what I mean? so, yeah. so it yeah. was, um, it's so amazing to dive into scripture and explore it and see um, not necessarily challenge the the scripture, but to um, try to look at multiple versions. Yeah, and yeah. To share with us it's... and looking at all areas of the scripture, because if you take the Bible word for word, you're in for some a a word of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, I'm so glad you brought that up because I was going to mention this last week. Um, So in uh, uh, Pastor Jim's first sermon of this series, he was talking about how the origin story um, was um, more so focused on a declaration of faith based on the Jews being in exile. And that that actually provides an explanation for um, the, the verbiage and just overall descriptions and detail um, in that um, that origin story. So so, yeah, it's like looking, you know, I, I keep I, I feel like now I'm just mentioning this every episode, but you look at the the Wesleyan quadrilateral, right? It's like there was the, there was the history. <laughs> well, we have to mention at least once per podcast. So <laughs> yeah. Great okay, right. into that. Great to maintain our Methodist sponsorship that we're, we're getting zero dollars from them. That's correct. That's good. Yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, you have the history with the exile. Um, and then you had uh, basically like the reasonable approach of like looking at the history and understanding uh, like the scripture and making that connection basically. Um, and then that provides an explanation for the text. Uh, and then we can ask other questions about like what, what exactly was the motivation behind that particular scripture worded that way, especially alongside um, another scripture, like maybe uh, two or three verses down. So yeah, it's just, just great stuff. Um, yeah, great. I like how, I like how there's four Gospels, too. Um, And uh, the uh, Gospel of John is um, quite a bit different than the other three. Um, And the Gospel of John actually talks about light a lot. And maybe it talks about darkness just as much. I I need to go through it again. But uh, but yeah, it's maybe you can do that this next week, Tim. Yeah, yeah, I'll mention. Yeah, <laughs> that, Just, that's awesome. And update yeah. us in one sentence what it's about next week. <laughs> uh, well, I think we did some good feedbacking. Is that yeah, a I no. think we all took away a lot from this, and we did. Oh, I really people. like that. Yeah, feedbacking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, feedbacking. Feeling, you know, leaning into the sad, all of the fun, you know, yeah, DNR, 
what have you. <laughs> oh, well, let's go ahead and uh, and, and uh, lean into some prayer requests. So I'm curious, uh, Tim, do you have any prayer requests for us? Um, now that I brought up all the different um, what I, I see as insight uh, in my update, I'm, I need to what I think I need a prayer for is like implementation of my daily, what I'm going to have as, as a daily meditation practice um, so that I can um, try to stick to uh, my morning and evening routines because mm-hmm. I still struggle with like uh, first thing in the morning, getting up and going on the computer uh, instead of getting ready first thing and then relaxing afterwards. I think that would help me so much if I did that. And same thing with the evening routine. Like I have just not been like flossing my teeth after I eat dinner. And uh, I just, <laughs> I just, I just would like sleep so much better if I did that. Plus like putting chapstick on and lotion on, like, like, I don't know, like I, my skin tends to be like dry after like washing my hands throughout the day and stuff. So I think eight hours of like, so, so yeah, all of that would be um, really helpful. Just kind of implementation of um, routine meditation plus, plus routine. Yeah. That, that I could use prayers for that. Yeah. We definitely will pray for you on that, Tim. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Beth. Um, actually all of my problems have been solved and I don't need any prayers whatsoever. So thank you. Beth, could you tell us how you did that in uh, one sentence? <laughs> um, okay, one sentence. I the didn't gospel. do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just asked myself, what would Jesus do, Tim? And then I... That's I perfect. Like, yeah. So, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I guess I could use prayers in um, the helping the, like process of getting this insurance stuff figured out and like you know all of the having to get a new car and everything prayers that that goes smoothly and I'm feeling like these past few days weeks years my whole life but more so the past few days, I've just been really hard on myself. Like, I feel like I can't get things together. Like I want to, and I keep forgetting things. And, and then I'm like, why did you forget that? Why can't you just get everything together? And I was supposed to send a package to my mom today so it could get there by the 17th and then the post office was closed and I was like why can't I just do things when they're supposed to be done and I just like get mad at myself so um I need to be nicer to myself and I would like prayers and just being more gentle with myself yeah yeah and yeah, de- definitely prayers rem- for you on that, Beth. Reminding myself that I'm a human and yeah. humans aren't perfect and we weren't ever supposed to be perfect. And right. yeah, so just just prayers and good vibes that Beth is nicer to herself this yeah. week. Yeah. This year and several years from now. Thank you for sharing that, Beth. Yes. Jessica? Well, uh, you know, I am, I've got a lot of doctor appointments scheduled this week. Uh, I, oh yeah. (laughs) Uh, I am in the process of, well, I and and Amber, I am trying to, they're all like fertility appointments. Uh, Oh, wow. We've tried, we've tried, uh, like four or five previous times uh, to get pregnant and we have been unsuccessful and we have one vial left, one left. Uh -uh. Um, And so you can only imagine the angst and the excitement, the uh, fear, the Uh darkness um, that's associated with all of it. And um, so, yeah, this week there's a couple, uh, 
appointments that are scheduled to kind of help a little bit with what's what's going on. And so I would say next week we're going to be uh, trying for the very last time with this this set of vials, um, because like I said, we only have one left um, to see if we can be successful. And I'm really like, I really want to be pregnant, guys. I'm like, we're so um, we want to start a family so bad. um, It's just been, you know, we've been trying for a little over a year at this point, because each time it's like, it's emotionally draining when it's successful. Because you, you know, for me as a woman, it's like, I, I, I am like, well, body, why are you not doing what you're supposed to do? You know? And yeah, I'm, just, I'm reminded of all of the things that it, it's like, well, don't be so hot on yourself because guess what? Yeah, yourself. Thanks to yourself because you're, you're yeah. trying to create a human. That's crazy. Like that's yeah. a, <laughs> no. a whole other person. And so, yeah. um, I've so created two that's... and I still don't know how it happened. I'm like, what <laughs> baby just grew inside of me? That's weird. Okay. So, yeah. And so I think for us, it's like, we're, we're ready. And, and yeah, yeah, for sure. At the end of the day, it's like, it's God's timing, you know, and, and we want to, oh, yeah. um, we want, uh, anyway, so that's kind of where, where I'm at, like with a prayer request that God will just, um, yeah. bring us peace, no matter what the outcome and mm-hmm. help us to continue trusting in, in the plans that are in store for us. And so there's that. Yeah. Um, and I th- honestly, I think that's kind of like the, the main prayer request is that um, other than we're going to see Wonka on Friday. Mm-hmm. So I'm really, let's pray that that's a good movie with Tim. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> So we're, we are excited to see that on Friday, um, but, but no, I mean, I think at the end of the day, this is the holidays. Like we want to have fun for, for the holidays. We want to celebrate and um, we want to enjoy everybody's company and community that we've, we've built here in, in the Antelope Valley. And yeah. um, but we also want to make sure that we're sensitive and um patient with people that are around us during this time because we don't know what people are going through when we enter the grocery sure. store. We don't know what people are thinking about as they're approaching the checkout register um, at the stores. You know, it could be the last few dollars that a single mom has. Yeah. You know, she's spending for her kids. Um, and mm-hmm. so just really being sensitive and and warm and patient with mm-hmm. with everybody this holiday season. Um, yeah. especially the drivers in Antelope Valley, please. And the yes. teenagers, wow. you have right of yes. because they're pedestrians. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I, I think that nobody actually wants to get into an accident. Like, I, I, I actually believe that that's the case. Like, nobody purposely crashes their car well, into somebody. So, yeah, it's like prayers for everybody that they don't accidentally do that. For yeah. Sure. Unless you're the YouTuber that purposefully jumped out of his plane to get likes and views and <laughs> crashed the plane. Oh, oh no. Stop video. Yeah. <gasps> literally some YouTube dude did that. Anyways. I um, anyway. Yeah. Jessica. Yeah. Pr- prayers for you on that for yeah. sure. Yeah. Th- thank you for sharing that. That, that definitely is. I, I can understand that to be a struggle, and and I I have confidence you'll be able to get through it. You and Amber. Yeah. If you. An, if any of you listeners have prayer requests, you can just shoot them over to our email address, Methodist yeah. to the Madness at gmail dot com. Yes, please do. We would love to mention you, or you can put DNR in the. <laughs> <laughs> or you can even you can even request that it be anonymous yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. That, that would be really nice if uh, we get those emails yeah so we appreciate everybody for listening in in this wonderful uh podcast we will talk to you next week we're all from different places we all have different names no matter what life brings us jesus is the same we're just your methodist to the madness methodist
day.